So in this video, we'll analyze the regret guarantees of Hedge, which we stated in the last lecture. So once again, I would like to thank NSF Award CCF1749864. Okay, so let's recall the general statement, right? So the general statement said for any fixed tau and for any learning rate eta and for any set of payoff vectors f1 to f tau and for any distribution p star belonging to p star over the set uh, a distribution p star over the set of actions we wanted to show that the sum of uh, sum from t equal to 1 to tau the inner product of pt which is the which is the distribution chosen by the algorithm at time step t with ft is at least as large as 1 minus eta times uh, summing from t equal to 1 to tau the arbitrary distribution p star inner product with ft minus this additive term of log k over eta, right? So we want to show this. So how do we do this? So recall that the algorithm had uh, this particular function zt. So zt, which is just the sum of uh, all the weights over all the actions at time step t. So we'll just use this as a potential function. So we will uh, see how this grows and then we'll both upper and lower bound this to, uh, to get our regret form. So this is, this is going to be a standard potential function analysis, which you would probably see in many algorithms. Okay, so let's look at zt plus one. So zt plus one by definition is equal to uh, just a sum of weights at time step t plus one. And by the definition of the hedge algorithm, this is equal to just the sum of all actions, wta times one plus eta times ft of a. So that's how you would go from in hedge, the way you update your weights at time step t plus one is just you take the weights at time plus time step t and multiply it by one plus eta times ft of a, right? Okay, so now this is at most uh, wt of a times one plus eta times ft of a. So here we use this following uh, well-known algebraic inequality, which is that uh, if you have 1 plus x to the power alpha, where alpha is a quantity between 0 and 1, and uh, x is a quantity greater than 0, then 1 plus x to the power alpha is at most 1 plus alpha times x. So here alpha is ft of a and x is eta. So we use this to get this inequality. Okay, so this can be written as two sums. So the first sum is just the sum of weights wt of a. And the second is eta times sum of weights wt of a times ft of a. So this is just uh, algebraic uh, rearrangement. So we just split into two quantities. Okay. So zt plus of z, z of t plus one is at most this quantity. So so at most this. Okay. So the first term is essentially zt because sum of weights at time step t is just zt, and the second term multiply and divide by zt. So multiply by zt and divide by zt. And notice that uh, zt, wt of a by zt is precisely pt of a, right? So in the algorithm, if you look, if you recall the algorithm in the previous uh, video, pt of a was essentially uh, wt of a normalized by this normalizing factor. So this particular term here becomes equal to pt of a. So this is equal to zt plus eta times zt times sum over a, uh, sum over the actions, pt of a times ft of a. And uh, if you just take zt common, so you get uh, zt, it's zt times one plus eta times pt times ft, right? So I've just written this as a linear product. So therefore, this sequence of uh, steps led you to say that zt plus one is less than or equal to zt times one plus eta times inner product of pt ft. So let me just write it down here. So you got zt plus one to be at most zt times one plus eta times pt times ft. Okay, so this is what this sequence of steps got you. Okay, so what so we can take log on both sides. So since log is a 
monotonic function uh, we'll take log on both sides so this gives you log of zt plus one is at most log of zt plus log of one plus eta times uh, pt times ft so here we also use the fact that uh, log of a b is log a plus log b okay so we use this fact okay so now what we, we got is that log of zt plus one is at most log of zt times this and we also got so we can again use an well-known uh, Taylor series expansion of log of one plus x. So this can be upper bounded by log of zt plus eta times inner product of pt with ft. So the Taylor series expansion of log of one plus x is uh, at most x because it, the Taylor series is x minus x square and so on. And the second term is uh, uh, less than zero. Okay, so the, we use this to get this in this inequality okay so this is true for every time step t right so here in this entire analysis we didn't use the fact that it was some arbitrarily chosen t so it it holds for every time step t so uh, the the so rearranging you get log of zt plus one minus log of zt is at most eta times pt times ft so i've just rearranged this statement here and then if you sum it over all the tau time steps, right? Sum it from t equal to one to tau on both sides. So you get uh, the sum of this is at most eta times this. And critically note that the left-hand side is a telescopic sum. So uh, zt, so z1 uh, and z, z2, z2 cancels, mi minus log z2, log z2 cancels, minus log z3, z3 cancels and so on. So what what we essentially end up getting is that so this entire sum here this entire sum here just turns out to be a uh, log of z of tau plus one uh, minus log of z1 so the, the z1 term doesn't get cancelled and the uh, z tau plus one term doesn't get cancelled so this sum is essentially this and uh, just bringing this eta this side you get that sum, sum from t equal to one to tau pt times ft is at least one over eta times log of z tau plus one minus log of z one. So we get this here. So recall in the statement which we we went to we were after uh, you wanted to lower bound this sum here. So we, we wanted to lower bound the sum t equal to one to tau pt times ft. So that's exactly what we have in the left hand side here. So this manipulation gave us exactly what we want on the left hand side here so we'll now look fo focus on the right hand side of this equation so z1 so z1 is a known quantity to us what is z1 z1 is just the sum of initial weights and note that all weights are initialized to be one right so z1 is essentially k so what we end up getting is sum t equal to one to tau pt times ft in a product is at least log of zt plus one by eta which is the first term in this equation here first term here and the second term log z1 which we said z1 is k so this just turns out to be log k by eta right okay so let's call let me call this equation one we'll come back to this equation so now all that is left remaining for us to sh lower bound is the to lower bound log of z tau plus one if we lower bound log of z tau plus one we have exactly what we want so let's see how do we lower bound log uh, z tau plus one, right? So let me look at a star, define a star here to be uh, the maximum over all distributions p such that uh, it's the cumulative inner product of p with ft, right? So this is, we'll look at this uh, a star. So firstly, uh, convince yourself that the maximum distribution or corresponding to all set of distributions over action is going to be a point mass, right? Because it's just a linear function and the mac just by convexity, the maximum is going to be just on a single arm. So this definition is mathematically valid. So let's define A star to be uh, the arm where the maximum over all distributions maximizes. Okay, so look at Z tau plus one. So by definition, Z tau plus one is uh, sum over all actions uh, w tau plus 1 
of A. This is just the definition. And uh, since each of the weights are non-negative, this is at least as large as W tau plus 1 at the arm A star. So the arm A star which was chosen above. So this is at least as large as W tau plus 1 of A star. Okay. And how does what is W tau plus 1 of A star? So W tau plus 1 of A star just by definition is just 1 plus eta times the payoffs from time steps 1 to time step tau of A star, right? So it's F1 of A star plus F2 of A star, so on up till F tau of A star. So it was just the product of one multiplying 1 plus eta to the power Ft of A star at, to the previous product at each time step. So W tau plus 1 of A star is essentially this by definition. So uh, this implies that Z tau plus 1, Z tau plus 1 is at least as large as this. Okay, so what does then log z tau plus 1 give us? Taking log on both sides, so you will get log z tau plus 1 is at least log of 1 plus eta. So you take log here times the sum of time steps from 1 to tau of f tau of a star, f, f t prime of a star. So it's just the, so it's log of 1 plus eta multiplied by the cumulative, uh, cumulative payoff of the a star, right? So look at A star. So what does A star give by definition? A star is the maximum over all possible distributions. So therefore, uh, this sum here is definitely going to be larger than uh, sum t, t prime from 1 to tau of any distribution P star, which was chosen. So the inner product of P star times F t prime, uh, sum from t prime equal to 1 to tau is going to be smaller than F t prime of A, the corresponding sum for just the payoff of A star. So therefore you got log of Z tau plus 1 is larger than log of 1 plus eta times the sum. And going back to equation 1, so equation 1 needed a lower bound on log Z tau, tau plus 1. And here we just showed that the, the lower required lower bound is this. So once you plug it back in, you'll get that sum t equal to 1 to tau of the inner product of Pt times Ft is larger than log of 1 plus eta by eta times uh, the cumulative sum of the inner product of p star with ft minus log k over eta. Okay, so we got, we almost are in, got all the terms we want, except we want to simplify this log of 1 plus eta by eta, right? So let's see how to simplify that. So this we use a standard, uh, once again, we'll use the standard Taylor series of log of 1 plus eta. So log of 1 plus eta is at least eta minus eta square for all eta greater than or equal to 0 because the Taylor series of log of 1 plus eta is just uh, eta minus eta square plus eta cube and so on and the second, the third term onwards is positive. So if you plug this back in, you get, uh, you get eta times 1 minus eta by eta which simplifies to 1 minus eta. So you get sum t equal to 1 to tau pt times ft is at least 1 minus eta times the inner product from of p star with ft and the sum from t equal to 1 to tau lo, minus log k over eta, which is exactly what we wanted. So this completes the proof. So the proof just proceeds by uh, just looking at this function zt and seeing how it evaluate, how it uh, progresses over the course of the algorithm. So so here, the way the analysis is stated, uh, it uses logs, uh, log of zt, but uh, one could as well have replaced this 1 plus eta with e to the eta. And if you kind of notice the entire, uh, if you run through the entire uh, analysis again, once you take the log, you will kind of get the same thing and you wouldn't have had to use the Taylor series of log of 1 plus eta. So that's something worth trying. So the proof is fairly simplified and straightforward, but it tells you something very powerful. So the theorem tells you that, uh, the theorem essentially tells you that hedge pretty much does as good as any other distribution you could have hoped to have. And in particular, it, it can be viewed as maintaining a distribution over a set of discrete actions. So if you ever want to maintain a, a distribution over a set of discrete actions and your feedback is given by an adaptive adversary. So it's, you need, hedge is kind of the right algorithm. So the adaptive adversary part is pretty critical. 
so okay so this uh, this is this completes the proof of the general theorem so now let's look at how to derive the corollary right so i said there's a corollary which is uh, which as an exercise you could try and see if you can derive the corollary by yourself uh, with the hint i gave uh, in when i told the corollary but let's look at look at it in a little more detailed manner okay so let's first rearrange this final statement right so let's rearrange this equation 3 so the uh, excuse me so let's rearrange equation 3 so once we rearrange equation 3 what we get is that sum from t equal to 1 to tau p star times ft minus t equal to 1 to tau pt times ft is at most eta times the sum t equal to 1 to t uh, tau p star times ft plus log k over eta so let me call this equation 4 now let's plug in tau equal to t and also note that the sum here the sum the, the sum here is upper bounded by capital t because each of the each of the inner product here is upper bounded by 1 right so ft is a vector in 0 1 to the k and you're just taking some convex combination so that's going to be at most 1 and the sum is going to be at most t so if you plug both of this back into 4 how does 4 look like so 4 is just summation t equal to 1 to t p star times ft minus t equal to 1 to t pt times ft is at most eta times t plus log k over eta right so this is how it simplifies to simplifies to and notice that here p star was an arbitrarily chosen distribution over the set of actions so in particular this holds for any distribution p star over the set of actions uh, but the regret so regret is compared against the best action in hindsight so we would appropriately change it later so the way we would do this simplify this is the fact that we want regret to be minimized so in particular we want this rhs to be minimized you want to minimize this and the variable uh, minimize this quantity and the variable here is eta so let's do the let's use calculus and just differentiate it and set it to zero so just differentiating this rhs with respect to eta notice that you would get a t minus log k by eta square will be zero so this implies that eta will be square root of log k by t so the minimizer will up occur so this is a minimizer so this is the minimizing eta so plugging this back into the back into this equation what do we get we get summation t equal to 1 to t p star times ft minus t equal to 1 to t pt times ft is at most 2 times square root t log k okay so the right hand side is now completely taken care of let's call this equation 5 right so now we have to deal with the terms on the left hand side okay so here's a fact you want you would want to notice so if i tell you the distributions p1 p2 up till pt minus 1 chosen by the algorithm and the payoff vectors f1 f2 up till ft minus 1 chosen by cho chosen by the adversary so if i tell you all the distributions chosen by the algorithm up till this point and the payoff chosen by the adversary at this point if i give you all this and take the expect and ask you in this conditional space what is the expected value of ft of at then this is precisely equal to pt times ft right because if i give you all these quantities this uh, distribution pt is deterministic because it's just a function of f1 f2 up till ft minus 1 so pt is deterministic likewise ft only depends on these quantities right the adversary once the adversary is given all this there's enough information to get ft so the expected value of ft of at in this conditional space is equal to pt times ft and this particular fact is going to be useful because we can use this well-known concentration inequality called the azuma hefting inequality which i'll describe so the Azuma Hefting inequality goes as follows. Let's say you have random variables x1, x2 up till xt. Each of them lie in 0, 1. So there are some arbitrary random variables which are in the interval 0, 1. And they need not be independent or identically distributed. But suppose we additionally have this fact that the expected value of xt given x1 to xt minus 1. So recall this particular this particular expected value is itself a random variable 
But if this random variable is equal to zero uniformly, right? So if it's always equal to zero, then you have churn off like concentration, which says that the total sum of uh, the sum t equal to one to t of x t is which is is larger than square root two t log one over delta with probability at most delta for some failure probability delta. Okay, so this is this is a significantly weaker form of the usual churn of Heffding bound, which applies to uh, these random variables x1 to xt. And sometimes these random variables x1 to xt is also called the martingale difference sequence, since the expected value in this conditional space is equal to 0. or And xt can be kind of treated as a difference between two martingales, or martingale and its expected value. Okay, so we'll use this Azuma Hefting inequality uh, for the proof. So this the Azuma Hefting inequality is going to show up again and again in all these lectures. So it's one uh, concentration inequality that you might want to keep in mind. Okay, so let's see how do we use this. What is a random variable going to be? So define x t to be p t times f t minus f t of a t. Right. So Azuma Hefting inequality needs these random variables. So define it to be x t times p t, uh, it's or the inner product of p t times f t minus f t of a t. Okay. 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 So in fact, let me state a slightly different version of the Azuma Hefting inequality. It's it's just going to uh, increase some constant. So suppose these random variables are in the interval minus one to one, right? So we don't need them to be between zero and one, but they're in the interval minus one to one. Then the same thing holds true with a factor two here. Okay, so there's a go there's going to be a multiplicative factor of two in front. Okay, so other than some constants, uh, not much changes. So let's uh, define x t to be inner product of p t times f t minus f t of a t. Okay, so from six we see that expected value of x t is equal to zero, right? If I give you uh, all information uh, from x1 x2 up till xt minus 1 then xt the expected value of xt is 0 that's essentially what we showed here and also note that xt is a random variable which whose interval lies in minus 1 to 1 so this is at most 1 this is at most 1 and both of them are greater than or equal to 0 so it lies in interval minus 1 to 1 so we can directly use azuma hefting inequality so what do we get we get with probability at least 1 minus delta uh, summation t equal to 1 to t p t times f t minus summation t equal to 1 to t f t times f t of a t which is exactly what x t is is at most uh, so since we had a multiplied by 2 so it's 2 times square root t log 1 over delta so this is just uh, plugging it into this equation here so from Azuma Hefting you get this and recall that in 5 right let me make it small just so that you can see it so in five, we we have we proved that p star times f t minus t equal to one to t p t times f t is at most two square root t log k. So add five with uh, the equation here, which is seven. So adding uh, five with seven, what do we get? So we get t equal to one to t p star times f t minus t equal to one to t f t of a t. Essentially, this p t times f t cancels out, and you get. Uh, 2 times square root t log k plus we added a 2 here so we get plus 2 times square root t 2 t log 1 over delta which uh, at can be at most okay so some constants have to be changed let's call it 8 here which you can upper bound by this right uh, since delta is less than or equal to 1 uh, this holds true and so this entire inequality holds with probability 1 minus delta Okay, so now we have all the terms we want. So we have this term here, which is what the, this is the re, tot, sum of the realized rewards of the algorithm. We have the regret term here, and this holds for any distribution P star over the set of actions. So in particular, this also holds for the point mass on the best action A star. So replace P star with that, and then you get what you want, which is that summation t equal to 1 to t uh, f t of a star minus this 
is at most 8 times square root t log k over delta with probability one minus delta and this gives our corollary so once again the dependence on t is the right dependence which is square root t and the dependence on k is log k so this is both of these are optimal and the left hand side is the total regret of the algorithm okay so this so the corollary is kind of straightforward to prove if you know about azuma hefting and so it's just a direct application of the azuma hefting inequality and like i said this azuma hefting inequality will show up again and again in the other lectures as well uh, maybe so there there may be some variations in the range and constants and so on but by and large it's going to be the same inequality and as in when we require the range to be changed i will describe how the range affects the constants okay so that uh, with that we conclude the analysis of hedge so hedge uh, uh, solves the full feedback problem and gives you the optimal regret of square root t log k.